Uh, but I, I agree with you. There's going to be more cycles. There's going to be a lot more scams, uh, you know, worse than Luna, probably. Hello, everyone. Today, our guests are Jimmy Song and Robert Breedlove. Jimmy Song is a Bitcoin developer, educator, and entrepreneur. He's a programmer with over 20 years experience, an open source contributor to many different Bitcoin projects, and the author of Programming Bitcoin from O'Reilly, The Little Bitcoin Book, Thank God for Bitcoin and Be Itcoin and the American Dream. Robert Breedlove is a freedom maximalist, ex-hedge fund manager, and philosopher in the Bitcoin space. In this video, both Jimmy Song and Robert Breedlove talk about Bitcoin and the crypto crash. Jimmy Song slams the blockchain space and calls it a scam and believes it is not a tech and nothing innovative will come from it. Robert Breedlove claims that Bitcoin should be considered a long-time investment and we should just hold it as long as possible. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin's price near $20,000 during European hours Wednesday as it extended a 12-week slide amid weak macroeconomic sentiment and contagion risk from within the crypto market data shows. Crypto lender Celsius paused all withdrawals earlier this week citing extreme market conditions, leading to questions about the firm's liquidity. Prominent crypto fund Three Arrows faced at least $400 million in liquidations and scrambled to lower its collateral levels by selling key positions Wednesday morning. Bitcoin fell to just above the $22,000 level in U.S. hours Tuesday. The decline gathered pace Wednesday morning, with the cryptocurrency sliding under $21,000, dropping for the eighth consecutive day and losing 30% over the past week. The asset traded reached as low as $20,169 this morning, a level that was previously seen in mid-2020 and marked Bitcoin highs in late 2017. Current sentiment among investors remains bearish. Well, it's, uh, you know, I, I've said this before, but DeFi was recreating all of the crazy stuff of wall street from like 2008 and we're we're seeing the equivalent of bear stearns and uh you know lehman brothers basically happening right now and there's significant contagion i expect this stuff to continue because that's what all this was it was all built on a house of cards is starting to fall down and uh and we're gonna see a lot a lot of other stuff fall down what I'm noticing is that the most liquid collateral gets, uh, you know, sold off first, and that tends to be Bitcoin or wrapped Bitcoin or whatever the hell, you know, these DeFi protocols use. But uh, but that that's that's what we're seeing. Um, it does, uh, you know, it's obviously affecting Bitcoin price as well. But um, you know, the tide's going out. We'll see who's swimming naked, and we've already seen three. What's ultimately happening is you're just injecting more uncertainty into the marketplace. So I think market actors get really confused between this currency is clearly getting debased and devalued, but I also need to hoard some currency to hedge against that uncertainty. So people get kind of like whipsawed in, the, in these inflationary, deflationary waves. Um, I think recent events, though, point to, like Jimmy said, something I've been saying for a while, which is pain as information. Like us educators can talk until we're blue in the face about self-custody and counterparty risk, but people don't really understand what that means until they feel it in their bones through events like these. So unfortunately, um, it's kind of the way of the universe to some extent. You, you really need the pain to, to adjust. And I think uh, a lot more Bitcoin maximalists were recently minted through events like this. I myself, I don't even like to admit this, but I've been holding some extra dollars recently, not selling Bitcoin for dollars, but just incoming revenue, just holding dollars in anticipation of an event like this. Again, following the the wisdom from that, that Weimar chart and kind of a study of, of hyperinflations, I thought there would be something like this. There'd be some kind of macro shock that would create a, a liquidity crisis and Bitcoin would go on sell. And indeed, I've been buying you know, many hundreds of millions of sats the past few days, and I feel good about it. So uh, I'm not trying to brag for anyone out there that's hurting, but hopefully you can get to this point in your strategy where the volatility actually works in your favor 
and you're never forced into a situation of, of forced selling or duress, um, which basically means avoid leverage and avoid. Uh, when you have, uh, you know, DeFi, quote unquote, things that, that are extremely leveraged, uh, you know, what, what people do is they um, they stake something, they borrow against it, and then they, they put more money into it. it. It's really just a giant leverage play. And of course, they're going to go down way more when the market moves as a result. It, it's not technology at all. If it, as a technologist, I haven't seen anything that's actually innovative there. So... For me, th this is, again, reproducing what happened in 2008, where you had enormous leverage ratios. I, I, I think uh, I was reading about how JP Morgan at the time had something like 50x leverage on, on a lot of their trades. This, this is essentially happening uh, you know, in, in, in the crypto market, essentially, where uh, all of these uh, tokens are leveraged positions on Ethereum or, or, or something like that. And you're going to see much bigger crashes, not because they're innovating or anything like that. It's just because they're they're taking out more loans and uh, is essentially gambling like they would on BitMEX or something like that with 100x leverage. That, that that's essentially what they're doing. Wait, so you're you're saying that uh, you want to reproduce the stock market on a blockchain or something like that, and that's your one use case, really? That that's that, not my that's one use case, but that's one of the most interesting <laughs> use cases, I think. Okay, they've been talking about this, this since 2014. No one's made anything. And uh, uh, umpteen tokens have been made to, quote unquote, do whatever it is that you're you're talking about. None of them have come to anything. You're, you're really going to say all that. after familiar eight years that. that something something innovative is going to happen. And I disagree with this notion that, like, uh, you know, the the tech coming out of it is what what the real world cares about. What the real world cares about, what the person on the street cares about, is making money and they all want to be rent seekers which is why why crypto is so freaking popular it's they want they want 100x leverage positions i think a vast majority of the people on uh on bitmex use 100x leverage and they they make some money and then they lose some money i mean they, they, this is so freaking common yeah um, everyone and, brought and like the, this notion that there's actually tech coming out i've been fighting this for like eight years there hasn't been any tech that's come out there, there have been so many companies that have been trying so hard to find some one use case for blockchain. It hasn't happened. You know, the, the alternative space is kind of like this expression of the human temptation to engage in money printing. Like everywhere there have ever been humans and the ability to print money, we've done it. We, we've just always done it. People can't resist the temptation to print free money. And it's kind of like what alternative coins are doing, it appears to be, is they're just trying to create their own little economy own little currency or monetary system and you know you could say it's there is this sort of blurred line where early stage ventures also kind of have to fake it till they make it to some extent they have to represent they're going to build this software and they're going to change the world in all these ways to go and raise capital and you know hype up a community and actually create some change but with the crypto world it does seem like they're trying to just there's a lot of this you know, we call it Dino, decentralized and name only. They're trying to just kind of orange wash their projects and say what Bitcoin did for money, we're going to do for whatever media, you know, fill in your use case here. And I don't know that that's exactly possible because you don't necessarily, you don't really engineer decentralization. There's kind of this idiosyncratic sequence of events and it doesn't, in my mind, at least today, it doesn't seem like you can apply it many places other than money. Like we're talking about doing this with stocks or securities and other things well all of that grounds out in some centralized party right the nature of a security is that there's some uh political apparatus that's labeling that thing a security and regulating it so you can't decentralize securities markets or stocks and i'm gonna have enough humility to say maybe there's some unrealized theory out there that i don't understand that maybe there's one use case that will emerge of all these tens of thousands of projects over the next few decades but for you to find that one diamond in the rough is so astronomically unlikely that you really should just stick to bitcoin it's almost like a useful fiction we treat every gun as if it's loaded well every gun's not loaded we know that but treat every gun as if it's loaded so you don't blow your head off well treat every coin that's not bitcoin like a shit coin and you'll not blow your head off 
why do you need a blockchain for any of that? This is this is the question that I've been asking for eight years that no one has given me a satisfactory answer to. You don't need a blockchain for any of that, and you don't. You certainly don't need a token. And this this is the this is the thing that frustrates me about VCs. They justify making a token when it's exactly like what Robert said. You're making your own central bank and getting to print your own money and making justifications and rationalizations for it. This is like immoral at a very high level because the people that suffer are the suckers at the very end that buy this stuff and get and, and go through these market crashes. And it's not even people, the poor people in the United States. It's people in Iran. It's people in Nigeria. It's people in Turkey. These are the people buying all of these altcoins that that, that all the VCs are dumping on them. And you're saying that, and you're justifying it with, oh, we're making new tech for this industry or that industry. And I'm I'm never going to admit that this is a, this is a complete scam. I I find that kind of attitude just unconscionable because you're essentially stealing from the poorest of the poor to enrich yourself beyond being your own central bank the, the, this is the, it's it's ridiculous to me uh, but I, I agree with you there's going to be more cycles there's going to be a lot more scams uh, you know worse than Luna probably uh, you know coming up I mean we, we had the big connect thing in 2017 we had something like Luna this time you're going to have a lot more of those a lot of these things are going to go down the thing that really uh gets people convinced on bitcoin is looking at the long-term chart and if you look at uh any chart not over six months but over six years or so and look at the all coins from six years ago you're, you're gonna see very few things on on the on, on the list uh very few things that have done well against bitcoin most of them have gone very close to zero against Bitcoin. And that that's the reality that people need to come to grips with is, OK, am I really going to make money, you know, investing in this coin? Um, they it, this is what, you know, low time preference behavior learning looks like. It, it it requires people to get burned on short term, you know, a high time preference behavior before they really learn that low time preference behavior is better. Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to I'm trying to pull it up. But to your point, there it is, right? There's the monthly Bitcoin chart going back to 2013. It's higher highs and higher lows. There's a lot of pain in there. But it's if you zoom out far enough, as to your point, it's a never ending pull, pull market, really. Yeah. And, you know, for anyone that's listening to this that hasn't learned through the pain yet, I mean, you have a real opportunity in front of you to learn through the pain of others. I would argue that that's one of the most intelligent things you can do in the world. If you can read a book or listen to someone. Jimmy Song slams the blockchain space and calls it a scam and believes it is not a tech and nothing innovative will come from it. Robert Breedlove claims that Bitcoin should be considered a long time investment and we should just hold it as long as possible. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.